Hello and welcome to another story recap. In this video, we're looking back on the 2019 galactic adventure, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. If you're new to this channel, we'll be basically explaining and recapping exactly what happens in this game. So naturally, spoilers are ahead. If you don't want the game spoiled but want to know a little bit about it, then you can watch my spoiler-free review by clicking up here. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is set five years after Order 66 and the fall of the Jedi Order and the Republic. We begin on a planet called Bracca, which is a junkyard planet in the mid-rim of the galaxy. We meet our protagonist and hero Cal Kestis, who is a scrapyard worker. The boss droid tells Cal and his friend Prowth to go and dismantle a trapped hull on a nearby Star Destroyer ship. The ship is based upon the highest point of the scrapyard and despite this being a world full of spaceships and flying things, we decide to climb there. When at the top, Cal and Prowth noticed a crashed Jedi starfighter. Cal wipes away some dirt to reveal the Jedi Order's symbol and seems to have a hint of sadness in his eyes. Then a huge accident takes place and Prowth and Cal are sent flying down the roof at a very high speed. Prowl falls and looks set to become dinner to the beast that is lurking below. However, just before he is consumed, Cal manages to save him by using the Force, thus revealing that Cal is actually a surviving Jedi. Which actually I, I, I did already know because I, I watched the trailer and I also saw the cover of, of, of the game, you know, but, but, but still it's pretty cool. So Pralf is safe and the duo get back on land. However, by using his force powers, Cal inadvertently alerted the Empire and specifically the Inquisitors who are responsible for tracking down surviving Jedi and eliminating them. Soon, the Inquisitors turn up on Bracca. One is referred to as the Second Sister and bears a menacing mask, whilst the other is known as the Ninth Sister and looks a little bit like my ex-girlfriend. Whilst interrogating the group of scrappers to discover who used the Force, Prowth, now knowing Cal's true identity, activates his hero mode and says, I'm Spartacus, and steps forth from the line. The Second Sister, knowing that this is a ploy, brutally kills Prowth with her lightsaber. Rest in peace, buddy. Gone too soon. Cal, naturally enraged at the loss of his best and only friend, ignites his saber and stupidly reveals himself to be the real Jedi. Wise up, Cal. Our hero manages to escape the clutches of the Ninth Sister, but looks to be falling to his death. Thankfully, his plot armor saves him and he lands on a space train thingy. Fighting our way through the pursuing stormtroopers, we are saved by an unknown spaceship. Well, nearly. Yet again, we plummet down below and are confronted by the second sister once more. Just fuck off all you love. We engage in a lightsaber duel in which we are, to say the least, fucking terrible at. Before we can be killed, resulting in the shortest video game ever, the spaceship turns up again and saves the day. A lady who, thanks to the subtitles we know is called Seer, covers us with blaster fire while we board the ship. Phew. When away from danger, we learn that the ship is called the Mantis and is crewed by Grease Detrus, who is a shifty green bloke, and Seer Junda. Seer reveals herself to be a former Jedi Master who knew Cal's master, Master Jaro Tapal. Seer shares her ambition to rebuild the Jedi Order with Cal and tells tale of her former master, Endo Cordova, who was researching into Force-sensitive children who are hidden around the galaxy, whom perhaps can become the future generation of Jedi. For unknown reasons, Seer no longer uses the Force or a lightsaber. We head to a planet called Bagano, which is not on Imperial records and is therefore out of the grasps of the Empire. The planet is where Endo Cordova lived whilst he was researching into Force-sensitive children. Now, Cal being only a Jedi Padawan at the moment of Order 66, never completed his Jedi training. Therefore, he has never learnt or has forgotten a lot of the standard Jedi skills. Luckily for him, the game does come with a pretty comprehensive tutorial. When on Bagano, we meet a little droid called BD-1. Fortunately, Cal is fluent in droid and can talk to the little dude. With BD-1 in tow, we explore the planet together and discover some of Cordova's research and secrets. Along the way, we learn that BD-1 actually belonged to Endo Cordova and has been alone on the planet since his master's death. I'm not crying. You are. 
It seems that Cordova was researching into an ancient race known as the Zepho. The Zepho were at some point on Bagano and constructed a huge ancient vault on the planet. The vault is sadly locked, although upon approaching we see a hologram of Endo Cordova himself who tells us that he has hidden the names of the four sensitive children across the galaxy on a small Jedi holocron and has placed that holocron inside the vault so that the Empire can't get it. Which is great! but it also means that we can't get it, dickhead. In order to open the vault, we must follow Cordova's footsteps and discover the key, brilliant. From Cordova's papers and scribblings in his home, we discover two leads, the home planet of the Zepho, which is creatively named Zepho, and a mysterious tomb on the planet of Dathomir. I decided to visit the latter one first. Dathomir is a hot, deserty wasteland populated mainly by spiders and other odd creatures. Upon exploring, we are confronted by a Night Sister, one of the natives of the planet. She recognizes our lightsaber and tells us that Jedi's aren't welcome here. We read that message, but we carry on exploring, cutting down a few of the Night Brothers in the process. Eventually, we stumble across an old man in hooded robes who tells us that he is simply a wanderer and a traveler. And we think, a bit of a strange place to visit, but whatever, and try to access the tomb. Sadly, Cal has forgotten how to Jedi jump, so he can't actually reach the tomb at this point, further proving that Cal is probably the worst Jedi ever. We trot back to our ship with our tail between our legs and head off on our other lead, Zepho. Arriving on Zepho, we discover that the Empire are one step ahead of us and are already there. The Zepho species have long left the planet after being driven away by the stormtroopers. However, they did construct several statues, temples, and monuments which hold ancient secrets. Upon exploring some of these, we learn the Zepho once visited the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk, as did Endo Cordova. We decide that this is the next logical destination. Seer remembers that her former master Cordova was once very close to the Wookiee chieftain Tarful. Upon arriving, we learn that the Empire has taken over the planet and have been capturing and enslaving Wookiees who live there. However, we also discover that a resistant movement led by the freedom fighter Saw Gerrera and his partisans has formed and alongside the remaining free Wookiees are fighting to restore the planet's freedom. As always in Star Wars, style is everything and we crash onto the scene by hijacking an Imperial Walker and using it to take out a battalion of stormtroopers. Naturally, the Freedom Fighters and Saw Gerrera say hi and we sadly learn that the Partisans and the Free Wookiees have had no contact with Chieftain Tarful for some time. We decide to explore ourselves and whilst on the way we help in the freedom fights by freeing some of the captive Wookiees. Thanks to our joint endeavours, Kashyyyk is liberated and the Empire are driven away. Do you hear the people sing? We share a nice celebratory moment but ultimately our personal mission is a failure as we cannot find Tarful. Back we go. We return to Zepho to investigate one of the ancient tombs, hoping to find a new lead. Whilst exploring, we again encounter the second sister. After a short skirmish in which we very nearly die, but for a clever intervention by BD-1 who activates a laser shield between the two, we learn of the second sister's true identity. Her name is Trilla Sidori, a former Jedi Padawan who became an Imperial Inquisitor after months of horrific torture and ordeals at the hands of the Empire. Furthermore, we learn that Trilla's former Jedi Master was none other than Seer, who is currently chilling back on the Mantis. Trilla claims that Seer betrayed her location whilst being tortured by the Empire, allowing her to be captured. After this altercation, we learn that we have to find a Zepho Astrium, which is essentially an ancient key in order to unlock the vault back on Bogano. Before we can get back to the Mantis and continue on our journey, we are knocked out and captured by a bounty hunter. Marvellous. We awake in an unknown location and stumble across a gladiator arena. We learn at this point that we have been captured by a mercenary crime group known as the Haxian Brood. We are forced to fight all manner of beast in the arena and we ask... Are you not entertained? ARE YOU NOT ENTERTAINED?! Eventually, the Mantis turns up and saves the day yet again. When back on board, we learn that Grease is in debt to the Haxian Brood due to his gambling problems, and that's why we were captured. When the fun stops, stop. We then receive a transmission from Kashyyyk telling us that Tarful has been located and is willing to speak to us. We set our sat-nav to the Wookiee homeworld and meet the famed chieftain. Unsurprisingly, the big furball is pretty useless. He instead tells us to climb a big tree known as the Wookiee Origin Tree, which holds mystical powers and will give us the answers that we require. Nice one. 
up we go on a crazy ascent to the summit of this huge tree. Whilst on the way, we are attacked by the ninth sister, who shoots at us in her ship before being intercepted by a giant bird. The bird is revealed to be a Shio bird, an extremely rare and believed extinct species that protects the origin tree. Upon discovering it's injured, we help remove some shrapnel from its wing and therefore earn its trust. The Shio bird helps on our journey and flies us to the top of the origin tree where we see another hologram from Endo Cordova. In this hologram, he tells us that he discovered the astrium can be found on Dathomir. Luckily, during this sequence, we also remember how to jump, meaning we are all equipped and ready to head back there. Just before we can leave, we are confronted by the ninth sister who somehow survived her earlier ordeal with the Shio bird. After an intense battle, we managed to overcome the ugly hag and send her to Valhalla. Sorry, wrong game. The real test begins when on Dathmir again. We manage to make the jump this time, but before we can enter the tomb, the Night Sister appears and causes a massive landslide, which again sees us falling to our death. We survive, and whilst making our way back up, we learn more about the history of Dathomir. The Night Sister Merin, who we encountered previously, is the last remaining Night Sister after the others were massacred by a Jedi during the Clone Wars, hence her dislike for the Jedi. Cal, knowing the Jedi way, knows that this can't be true. On our way, we encounter a huge beast whom we epically battle across the whole planet before we emerge victorious. Back on track, we finally enter the tomb. Sadly, there is a door which will not open. Instead, touching it causes a flashback to younger Cal at the moment Order 66 happened. We see how he and his master, Jaro Tapao, tried to escape the attacking clones. They made their way to the escape pod hangar before Master Tapao is struck by the traitors. Cal, despite being a Padawan, holds his own and repels the attackers, allowing him and his master to launch their escape. Whilst plummeting down to the planet of Bracca below, Jaro Tapao very sadly dies. Upon seemingly awakening from the flashback, Cal is confronted by none other than Jaro Tapao, whom ignites his lightsaber and duels Cal, while sporadically taunting Cal and blaming him for his death. Eventually, Cal strikes Tapao down, but his master crushes his lightsaber, rendering it useless. Cal emerges from the vision confused and also discovers that his lightsaber really is broken, making him even more confused. For the second time in this game, we head back from Dathomir empty-handed. Fucking hell. After leaving the tomb, we see the strange old man again who tries to talk to us, but we're really in no mood, so we coldly dismiss him. He then reveals himself to be Taron Malikos, a former Jedi Master. He crash landed on the planet after surviving Order 66 and has since become consumed by the darkness of the planet and has been manipulating the native Knight Brothers to follow him. It's also explained that it was he who told Merin that the Jedi killed her kin many years ago, when in fact it was General Grievous simply wielding a Jedi lightsaber. Frustrated that she had been manipulated, Merin goes mental and resurrects the corpses of her fallen sisters who attack Malakos and Cal. With us being lightsaberless, we leg it back to the Mantis and make a swift exit. Pausing our main quest line for now whilst we pursue a new one of gaining a working lightsaber. Sadly, lightsaber shops do not exist and we have to visit the ancient snowy planet of Elam, which is home to an old Jedi temple of which Cal reminisces being taken to as a child. Within the temple are kyber crystals, which is used to create a lightsaber. We acquire a crystal, but can you fucking believe it? It breaks. Cal is distraught and sulks on the icy floor. However, BD1 saves the day by playing a hologram of his emotional farewell to his friend and master, Endo Cordova. This inspires Cal, who realizes that he cannot give up now and manages to fix the crystal. And once we decide on the color, we have a brand new lightsaber. Now, with our new toy equipped, we seemingly have... and can now cut through enemies like a hot knife through butter. Back on Dathomir, we go and again face the vision of our former master. This time, having accepted the past and overcoming our guilt, we manage to defeat him. This opens the door to the tomb. When inside, we again encounter Night Sister Merin, who this time seems to understand that the Jedi were not responsible for the massacre and allows Cal to continue on his journey. We then must face Taran Malikos, who tries to persuade us to join his cause, where he claims he will build a new order better 
than the Jedi. We refuse and fight Malakos. In the epic duel, we actually hold our own for a while, which is pretty impressive when you consider that Taran Malakos is a Jedi Master and is far beyond our skill. However, eventually Malakos does overcome us, and just before he can kill us, Merin intervenes and kills Malakos. We continue through the tomb and find the astrium that we have been seeking. Following this, Cal and Merin have a heart-to-heart -heart in which they both discuss how they feel alone following the loss of their kin and their order. Merin subsequently offers her help and joins our crew. With the Astrium in our possession, we head back to Bogano and unlock the vault. Upon doing so, Cal is launched into a dreamlike vision in which he encounters the ancient Zepho people and also sees visions of the future Jedi Padawans being hunted and killed by the Empire like those before. This casts a doubt in Cal's mind as to what to do with the list of Force-sensitive children. Fortunately, he doesn't have to decide because after recovering the holocron, Trilla turns up and steals it. During the duel, Cal grabs Trilla's lightsaber, which prompts another vision. This time, he sees what Trilla was subjected to at the hands of the Empire and how she was converted to the dark side. Back on the Mantis, Seer explains her side of the story. She was tortured by the Empire for the location of her Padawan, but eventually escaped by using the dark side of the Force after becoming angry by seeing that Trilla had been converted. And this is why she shut herself off from the Force, simply scared that she would succumb to the dark side yet again. Noticing Cal's need for her help, she picks up Trilla's lightsaber and seems to assume the role of a Jedi once again. Before continuing the journey, she officially dubs Cal a Jedi Knight. In pursuit of Trilla, and more importantly the Holocron, we head to the Inquisitor's headquarters on the planet Nur. Again, we run into the second sister who engages Cal in another epic duel. This time, Cal, now much stronger, manages to overcome and defeat Trilla. He leaves her fate in Seer's hand who pleads with Trilla to see the light. And finally, it seems to work as Trilla breaks her harsh exterior and begins to listen to her former master. But just as things start to work out, I'll fuck off. Lord Vader, of course, appears and perhaps sensing her change in allegiance, kills Trilla. Rest in peace. He then casts Seer aside with ease before engaging Cal in a lightsaber duel. Naturally, we are no match for Vader and are forced to flee. Just when we think we are safe, he appears again, and with the end seemingly nigh, Seer, who we thought to be dead, reappears and manages to hold off the Sith Lord long enough for us to escape. Seer passes out due to the immense force power she used in fighting Vader, but Merin appears and helps Cal get her to safety. Back on the Mantis, the crew celebrate their success and study the holocron, deciding now what the best plan of action would be. Then Cal, whoa, 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 Cal, 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 what the fuck, man? Cal decides to destroy the holocron so that the children won't be pursued by the Empire, instead echoing his master's words of trusting in the Force and allowing the Force-sensitive children to discover their powers on their own, which basically means we spent 25 hours trying to get our hands on this fucking thing for Cal to just destroy it. Fuck! Thank you for watching this story recap. For more, just check out my channel and please hit subscribe to be the first to know about any future videos. And the reminder, if you're planning on playing this game, you can watch my honest review by clicking on the screen right now.